Hey, what's up guys? I'm Skip and you're watching High Volts RC. Today's episode, I'm going to be doing my version of a waterproofing video. I know there's lots of them out there on YouTube, lots of great uh, and different ways to do different waterproofing, and that's where I've learned most of my tips and techniques that I use to waterproof my RCs came from other YouTube videos. So it's actually, I've actually had quite a quite a popular request, or it's been requested quite a bit that I make uh, a, U uh, a YouTube video, yes I'm going to make YouTube videos now, a waterproofing video and let you guys know what you need to do. So this video is going to tell you what you need to do and coming, uh, coming soon following this video will be all the how to videos on each individual step on each part that what you need to do to get that part ready for the mud. So we're going to go down a list here of, uh, we have two categories, first is the electrical parts and second is the chassis parts. I'm going to try to go through this quick guys and at the end I'm going to explain what to do with each one of these parts but I want to know, I want to let you know what, what we're going to be looking at first of all. First of all you have your ESC, this is of course what runs your motor in your RC car and um, it takes the power from your battery, sends it to the motor and, and, and makes all the magical happen. So, the magical happen. So that's what you need that for. You also have your, your radio receiver. This is what talks or this is what your controller that you hold on to talks to and tells the car when to go and when to turn and everything like that. You also have your steering servo. This is what turns your front tires and makes your vehicle be able to turn. As well as we have a motor, which I don't have one in front of me, but we're going to talk about the motor a little bit um, in, a, in a minute here as well. Now, uh, to go along with the radio gear, you actually have a couple, um, sometimes they'll come with a, a box that the radio gear lives in. Some of these boxes were, are not waterproof and some of them are. This is the box out of my HPI Wheelie King and it came with a fully waterproof radio gear box and the radio that came in it uh, was not waterproof so it came with this little housing that made the truck waterproof in theory from from the factory it came with a, a lid that had a gasket on the top as well as a little gasket uh, covering on the bottom that sealed the, the wires in there pretty well so you have to kind of look at wh which uh, car you got and, and see some of them that uh, do not have a waterproof steering box you can actually seal it up with, um, with the gasket sealer I'm going to show you here in a second this is what I used to waterproof stuff with and you can actually turn a non waterproof box into a waterproof box if you feel more comfortable with maybe doing that instead of taking your receiver apart and waterproofing it. At any rate we now have the chassis parts now the biggest thing about the chassis part is the wheels and tires the wheels and tires actually come with holes in the back of them you can hear the air escaping out of this one that's the, uh, that's the holes in the wheel that actually lets the air come in and out that gives you a softer kind of tire bite. The problem with that is, is the water runs in there and once you have a sealed glued on tire and water in it soaking into your foam inserts, your tire becomes very heavy, your, your performance uh, um, starts to lack very quickly with those heavy tires on it and that water and mud just sloshing around there and it's going to get worse every time you go into the mud. Um, next thing you have is um, the transmission and the drive axles. Now both the transmission and drive axles of course have drive gears in them and they come equipped with grease on them already. A very good idea is to do with them is to go ahead and break those apart and make sure they have adequate amount of grease in there, not too much. You definitely don't want to pack it and load it up. I'm going to show you guys exactly how to do all these like I said in my upcoming how-to videos but um, a good, good rule of thumb there is just put grease inside make sure it's all good and happy because water and mud is going to get inside there but as long as it's got a good amount of grease to, to, to live in there with all that you're going to be alright. Those are pretty commonly changed parts anyways the gears inside the transmissions and rear ends so more than likely you're going to be in there anyways you're going to be changing out parts and re replacing that grease and everything as well. So that's what to do with the transmission and and uh, drive shafts or uh, drive axles, the wheels and tires. What I do is I use a stuff that.
Alright guys, so what I use to seal up my tires and most of these other electrical components is this ultra black gasket maker, gasket sealer that you would get at like an automotive uh, parts store. There's lots of different stuff that you can use. This stuff right here is definitely uh, permanent. If you coat, um, I'll talk more about this later, but if you like coat your, your receiver board, your computer control board inside this receiver, it's never coming off. That thing has got a solid coating on it and it's not going to come off easy like some other things like for say the plastic dip you can use it's the stuff that you would dip the handle of the pliers or screwdriver stuff like that in to give it a kind of a rubberized coating you can use that sort of stuff for this too but it's not as permanent it does come off I've just always used this and had great luck with it so you can kind of do your research and, and uh, decide what you're going to use for, for, for your purposes now what you do with the tires is the hole on the back of it you're actually just going to take a small glob of this take your finger and wipe it right into that hole make sure anytime you use a silicone based uh, gasket sealer or any sort of thing like this you don't leave any harsh edges on it you want to smooth it out so it has a smooth transition to the rest of the wheel that way it won't peel up on you once you do that you let it dry the next day and you got a solid tire it's not going to do this anymore it's going to be a little bit more bouncy because it's going to hold that air in it but no water is going to be able to get inside you're not going to have to worry about that uh, foam getting soaked in there and all that extra weight pulling around that you don't need in there. So that's pretty much it with the chassis. I want to go ahead and talk about the electrical parts some more. The ESCs, a lot of them come with waterproof ESCs now and that's great. You don't have to do anything with it. If it does not have a waterproof ESC, what you'll actually end up doing is you'll take this case apart. You'll see inside of this case will be a small electronic circuit board. You'll coat that circuit board with the black gasket sealer on both sides, put it back in the case, squish the case back together. Once it's dried, you have a waterproof ESC now. The same thing goes for the receivers for your radio gear. This little case will pop apart. You fill up, uh, you know, coat the circuit board on both sides. I filled up the case on this one. This is actually one that I did for my Kyosho Rage. There is a video on this that I'll go ahead and leave the link in the description below so you can go ahead and see it now, the process that you actually do for this. I will be doing it again on this truck just to show everybody in my coming up how-to videos. But that's what you do. You just coat the circuit board, smash this thing back together. Once it dries, you got a waterproof receiver. Now, the servo. Servo is pretty much the same way. If you open up the back side of the servo, it has four screws on it. There's a little circuit board inside there. You want to coat that circuit board. I did that as well as I went around the outside of the little case here and where the wire pokes through and I put the put a small amount. You don't want to get it, you don't want to fill up the inside with the with the silicone because it does have some moving parts and stuff in there, I believe as well. You only need to coat the circuit board and go around the outside, smashing this down, just putting the screws back in it, and you got a good watertight seal. On the front of the circuit, or on the front of the servo, this will come out. Um, this will come apart at the same time that you take the four back screws out. This uh, will basically these screws sandwich the whole thing together. When you take these four back screws out, this front plate will pop off. You want to pack grease in here in the gears and the bearings that's in here in the front case. Once you put that back on, all that grease in there will, in theory, keep out most of the mud and the water and the junk. Um, I've always had good luck with it. I've always ran my servos this way and not had any problems with them at all. In fact, a lot of my servos, I've just ran just old, cheap, regular servos that I've had. Just run them right in the water and mud until they finally give out a couple months later. But they, they usually, little servos, they really don't care about running in water too much. They'll usually do a pretty good job. Now, I'm not going to say you got an unwaterproof servo. You go and throw it in the throw your truck in the mud puddles, and, and it doesn't go out. And I'm not going to say it's not going to. But I have ran just bone stock servos in all kinds of mudding and water conditions, and and they've lasted quite a long time. So, and also we have the motor. Now on the motors, you don't really have to do too much. On the brushless motors, for the most part, they're sealed up and they're ready to go. Um, the motors will run fully exposed to water. You can fill that motor up with water, it'll still run no problem. Uh, same thing with the brushed, brushed motors, which are more commonly found like in the scalers here. Uh, they'll run underwater all day long. They don't care one bit. The one thing that does happen to them is that the water and um, 
in the brush motors, the water and the mud can actually get in between the brushes and the motor where it makes contact and cause it to stop working. What you actually do is just roll the truck back and forth a little bit, get that dirt out of there, and you're good to go. One way I've uh, got around this is actually by taping up the motor with just some electrical tape. Tape it up, the, um, the vents on it, as well as the back side, because the back side has holes in it too where the wires connect to the back side of the motor. You would tape that all up, that way no water, no mud can get into your motor and slow you down that way. Now this of course will uh, take away some of your heating, uh, your, sir, some of your ability to dissipate the heat out of your motor but if you're running in the mud and doing all that you're probably your motors probably staying pretty cool with the water and the stuff that you're doing it's not recommended just to go ahead and tape up your motor and run it every day on the racetrack or whatever it will get hot because you are going to be taking some of its you know, ability to release some of that heat with its little fan and those little vents in the motor uh, the brushless motor you can take them actually take them apart most of them will have a back a, a back plate on them and you can take that apart and seal that up if it makes you feel any better. I haven't done it. I, the only uh, brushless motor I have ran was on my Kyosho Rage and that thing did leak some water in the motor. It actually got a little froze up and I had to run it around a little bit and I squirted some oil inside the motor and got it to free up. So that's one thing that I would recommend doing is actually taking your brushless motor apart, seeing where there is any entries that the water could make into your motor and get those sealed up good. Like I said guys, I'm going to be going through every one of these, how to waterproof your servo, how to waterproof your ESC, your radio gear, what to do with your wheels. I'm going to give you an in-depth, detailed video on each one of these steps, like I said, on the new SCX-10 here, because this thing is bone stock and, and I'm ready to get it into some mud, honestly. I'm ready to get some mud bogging videos done, but I wanted to get this video series done first uh, for you guys as well. So if this helped you out in any way, hopefully this lets you know kind of what you need to do for your, your new RC to get it ready for the mud and the water and whatever you want to do with it. Um, hopefully it helped you out. Please go ahead and give us a like down below and uh, get, be on the lookout for the how-to video series coming up next. Alright guys, until next time, we'll see you. Peace.